Hey guys, it's Christopher and welcome to another Solaris tutorial. I am going to explain how to move things, things that can be um, various objects like entities from the map, but also directly images that you show on the screen. Um, so, so let's create a map for this chapter 22. 22 about movements and movements will be very useful to enemies. Um, so let's make a house. Very quickly with a destination and an unplaying character here. So non-playing characters um, from Earning to the Past, some of them have um, the walking animation, it's a case of those three ones, and also Zelda, Thief I think so, this one, um, Sorcerer, I don't remember, I don't think so, anyway, uh, but static villagers can only be stopped. Um, so, okay. Link to Pass Villager 1. And the subtype should be a usual NPC so that its sprite animation automatically follow um, the movement that we will set. Okay. So this is a uh, non playing character. Let's try that. Start the game on chapter 22. Okay, so we have a non-playing character. And to make a movement, you have to open the script of the map. And when the map starts, so map unstarted, you create a movement object. And to create a movement object, if you read the documentation, Lua movements, there are um, those types of m movements provided by the engine. So, um, straight movement, uh, rectilinear trajectory, um, movement that targets the hero, for example. Um, circle mov circular movements, and for a non-playing character, we will use the movement of walking randomly. So this is called random path movement. And the, to create a movement, it's sol dot movement dot create, and then a string indicating the type of mo of, mo of movement. In our case, random path. <coughs> random path. Okay. And then you have to set the properties of your movement. But for this one, there are not mm, not a lot of properties. Um. These functions are available on all type of movements, and in the case of random path movements, there is only one, I mean two additional functions: get speed and set p speed. But the default speed is actually very good for NP for walking, non-playing characters. So don't set. We don't need to change any property of this movement, of this movement object. But then when you have finished to set the properties, you associate your movement to the object you want to move. And to do that you do movement start and you pass the object to move. The object to move is our NPC but to access it from the script 
we need to give a name my NPC okay and remember that once an entity has a name on the map you can access it directly from the map script like a normal variable like this so that's it we have a working non-playing character and um, notice that the sprite of this character automatically updates according to the direction of the movement. We never said anything particular to the sprite. Also, um, yes, it takes the working animation instead of the stop animation. This is because the sprite, um, the non playing characters, non playing character has subtype usual NPC somebody. So what I just described, the sprite automatically updating according to the movement, is the the built-in behavior of usual usual NPCs. If you do not want anything automatic you can use a generalized NPC and then it will move because you wanted you asked the, the NPC to move but the sprite doesn't do anything special <laughs> and it's up to your code to do what you want but the usual NPCs are adapted for most cases of NPCs um, okay, and so you can move any map entity that has a name. So, blocks, enemies, uh, teletransporters, uh, switches, uh, whatever you want. And if you want to move a tile, of course, that's not possible because tile don't have a name. But you know, uh, you can use dynamic tiles can convert it to a dynamic tile. This might be useful to make, for example, um, moving platforms above holes. Maybe we should do a tutorial for this one day. Um, okay, so this is a very simple example of movement. And as a second ev example, we will try to change, just for this chapter, this logo here. to um, to make a simple movement of a fixed image. So we will use this image to replace the, the complicated logo. It has several parts. So in the description of the video you will find an archive with this image to download and you should put it in um, your data sprite menus. So you have Solaris logo.png. It is actually the one currently used, and you are you are adding this one. And in your main script, you can see that the Solaris logo is included here. Is from a script menus slash service logo. So we we'll change all of this, almost all of this. Um, sorry. Um, we will see in the next chapter how to uh, make make a menu like title screen, the logo like this. But what we want for this logo is to simply draw the image. So when the menu when the menu is redrawn on draw uh, on a surface, which is actually the screen, 
you want to show the image so let's make a variable image surface, surface create and the name of the image um, Solaris logo full PNG and here image draw the draw, draw the image on the screen so this is our modified Solaris logo okay and the goal is to make the, this image move come from the the top of the screen and stop at the center so to do that we can display actually the image um, 160 pixels above and when the logo um, when the menu is starting create a movement and this time it will be a straight movement, a rectilinear movement this type of movement has more properties uh, than random path movement that we saw earlier you can change the speed the angle of the maximum distance um, so let's make a speed of 128 pixels per second and the angle, so the direction of the movement we want of the movement to go to the, uh, the bottom, to the south of the screen the angle should be in radians uh, but don't, don't worry, the directions, the main directions are given here <laughs> south is uh, 3 pi um, over 2 and let's stop the movement after the maximum distance of uh, 160 pixels, so the same value as here ok, so we created a movement and set some appropriate properties now we just have to associate a movement to something and more precisely to the image okay that's working great congratulations um, so as you can see you can start a movement not only on something that belongs to the map an entity of the map with the coordinates on, on the map but also to uh, an arbitrary image um, not, not that at this time we are not at all in a map, we are not in a game this is just a, a menu so the exact types of objects you can start an, a movement on are given here they can be map entities, so like NPCs, enemies, uh, chests, blocks, etc. The hero even. Drawable objects. So they include the surfaces, like the one we, like the example we just did. But also text surfaces and sprites, so animated images. And you can also move a pure layer object, a table um, and, and the, the X and Y fields of this table will be updated automatically from the movement so, but this is not used very often 
Anyway, we started the movement on the image and now we would like to play a sound and start the game. So there is this second parameter which is optional and which is of type function. When the movement finish finishes, this function will be called. So let's give a function. Uh, and and this function, what does it do? We would want it to play a sound. Let's play the sound OK, which is um, a sound that we hear in the the various menus of A Link to the Past, the save game menu, for example, I think. And let's start the game. Um, More precisely, let's end the lo the Solaris logo menu. So we will see this in more details in the next chapter. Um, Solaris logo menu. And when it ends, this code in main.lua will be called and the game will, will start. So this system of menus um, is nice to keep things independent. This logo can be used at any time and it doesn't know, uh, it isn't responsible of what, uh, what to do next. It just says, okay, um, I want to finish now. And then the guy who called the menu decides what to do later. Anyway, this is not the topic of this chapter. Okay, so it worked, but it was a, a, a bit fast. We can add a timer, maybe. Let's wait. Um, half a second. Before we stop the menu and start the game. Okay, good. So, um, I think that's it. You know how to create movements on map entities and how to create movement on arbitrary images. Again, uh, you can read the documentation. There are a lot of movement types, all those ones. They are all um, very useful in some cases. Uh, okay, so that's it for this tutorial. See you next time. Bye.